Welcome physics students to this video looking at strain potential energy and in particular we're focusing on the derivation of three equations as shown on the screen at the moment. Equation 1 for the force upon a spring, equation 2 for the strain potential energy of a spring and equation 3 a second variation for the strain potential energy stored in a spring. So equation number 1 the restoration force of a spring is equal to negative k delta x. Let's have a look at this. Now we want to derive this equation by using actual data, examining some evidence using the FET interactive simulation. So log on now to the FET interactive simulations and select the Hooke's Law option. Let's have a look at the FET interactive simulator for Hooke's Law. So we'll log in. Now we're going to use the basic introduction version. We have a spring and we can apply a force to that spring. We can either stretch it or we can apply a compressive force, extension or compression. We'll take it back to the zero point. Once into the simulation, we wish to now select the appropriate settings and collect the relevant force and extension data. Okay, we wish to tick the applied force, spring force, the displacement, the equilibrium position and the values. We're using a single spring. We could investigate a double spring system at the same time. Let's go back to our single spring. The first step is I want you to select a spring constant of your own choice. I'm going to go to 500. You could choose any spring constant. So this spring constant of 500 newtons per meter tells me that this spring would require 500 newtons to stretch it or compress it by one meter. So let's apply 10 newtons of force. So 10 newtons of force has displaced our spring by 0 0.02 of a meter. And I'd ask you to record that in Excel. 20 newtons of force generates an extension for this particular spring constant of 0 0.04 of a meter. 30.06 going up in intervals of 10 newtons of force gives me an extension of 0 0.08 50 gives me a force of 0.1 of a meter 60 gives me a force of 0.12 of a meter 70 gives me a force of 0.14 80, 0 0.16, 90, 0.18 and 100 is 0.2 of a meter now obviously if you're using a different spring constant then that changes the amount of extension a relatively high spring constant means you require greater force to stretch it and a low spring constant means you'll require less force to stretch it so your final extension of 0.2 of a meter will very much depend upon your chosen spring constant. Our first step is record our force and extension data in an Excel spreadsheet. So I've entered this data into an Excel spreadsheet. You can see that I've stated my spring constant, K, in 500 newtons per meter. And I've listed my force in my first column, measured in newtons. And I've listed my extension in the second column, measured in meters. Step number four, we now want to present this force extension data on XY scatter plot using Excel. First of all, I'm going to select the numbers. I'm going to go to insert and scatter plot is my choice, just the dots. Now we do this and it takes the second column and puts it in the Y variable and it takes the first column and puts in the X variable. You would recall that's not actually what we're trying to do. We wanted force on the vertical. One option is to reverse the order of your columns and that will graph it correctly. But it's easy enough to fix this up. Let's right click on the data and I want to select data. I want to remove what I've currently got and add a new set of data. So on my X values, which is where I want my displacement, I'll click on the right corner. I'll highlight my extension rather, not displacement. I'll highlight my extension and return it back. And then on the Y series, I want my forces. I'll highlight the cells that have the force values and I'll turn that back press OK again and we can clearly see now that my vertical scale is measuring up to 120 which is my force and my horizontal scale is measuring to 0.25 of a meter which is my extension data that's all now in the right format all we need to do now is really dress up our graph and depending on what version of Excel you have you might find my add chart elements button to the right or you might find that to the top of your screen I'm going to use the one on the right let's have a look at the title I'd like to change this title, Hooke's Law, the Y variable is force in Newtons, the extension is in meters. The next step with this graph is I'll right click on one of the dots, I want to add a trend line. So you can see over here when I'm adding my trend line, I want a linear trend line, I want to set the intercept to zero, so I want to go right through the origin, which was our first point, so that's not a problem, and I want to display the equation on the chart. So you can see here I have an equation of Y equals 500X. That's my force extension graph from my original data. Here's our Hooke's Law graph where we have force in newtons on the vertical or y-axis 
an extension delta x in meters on the horizontal or x-axis. Now this sounds a little counterintuitive because logically the extension is the dependent variable. It depends upon the force being applied. However, for the purpose of the equations we're deriving, it's easier and appropriate to label our axes with the force on the vertical and the extension on the horizontal. Let's now unpack our linear equation. So we have an expression up the top of our line of best fit that says y equals 500 times x. So y represents the force. You can see on the y-axis we've got a label of force. Likewise, the x variable is represented by extension. That's what we've labeled our horizontal axis on the graph. So at the moment we have an expression that says force equals 500 times extension. Now you recall 500 was the spring constant k that I chose from my simulation. So we know that the gradient of 500 actually represents the spring constant. So we have force equals k times extension. And this is traditionally written as f equals k delta x. That looks very similar to our first equation at the top here, with the exception of the negative symbol. So technically this equation is stated as the restoration force equals negative k delta x. Now the negative is just a notation to explain that the delta x, when we're stretching a spring, the force of the string is to pull it back in the opposite direction. Or alternatively, when we're compressing a spring, the restoration force is being directed in the opposite direction to the compression. So the negative is really a directional notation. For the purposes of calculation, we really just use F equals K delta X. That's our first derived equation. Fs, the spring restoring force, is equal to negative K, and K is a spring constant in newtons per meter, multiplied by delta X, the extension in meters. Our second equation is Es, the strain potential energy, is equal to half F, the force, times delta x, the extension, or compression, depending on the circumstances. And we want to now look at how we derive that equation. First of all, from our graph, let's examine the area under our line. So you can see in this green region, under the line down to the x-axis, that we have the area of a triangle. And of course, the equation for the area of a triangle is a half times base times height. Let's expand that one. The base of our graph is really a measurement of extension in meters, delta x. And the height of our graph is a measure of force in newtons. So the area under this graph is going to be equal to a half delta x times f, which comes from extension times force. This is commonly rewritten in the following order. The area equals a half f delta x. So that's the equation to work out the area under the force extension graph. But really, what does that represent? So if we look at the area under a force extension graph, we can see that it's measured by the product of the force in newtons and the extension in meters put them together, we have a unit of measurement of a newton meter, which is commonly referred to in SI units as the joule. So have a think, what else do we know is measured in joules? And of course, it is the work done in extending the spring, which is equal to the strain potential energy stored in the spring. If we apply a force and we extend a spring, we're obviously doing work on it, we're pulling it, applying a force for over a distance. So that represents the work done on the spring. Whilst we apply a force and we extend or stretch our spring, Obviously, the spring also gains energy, and that's equal to that work done. So the area under this graph represents the work done on the spring while it's being extended, and this is equal to the gain in strain potential energy that's stored in the spring. So our final part here for equation two, the strain potential energy in the spring is equal to half the force times delta x, the extension. And of course, delta x can also be compression if our scenario is a compressing spring. That's equation number two. Equation number three is very, very simple to calculate. It's a second version of the strain potential energy stored in a spring. So the equation we're looking at is, again, strain potential energy, but this time it's equal to a half k delta x squared. This is the most common version of the equation to calculate the strain potential energy in a spring. Let's look at our two equations. Equation number one states that the force upon the spring is equal to k delta x, and equation number two states that the strain potential energy stored in the spring is equal to half f delta x. So we can literally take our statement from equation one, the restoring force of the spring, and place it into equation two. So we're substituting k delta x from the first equation into the force variable for the second equation. So let's follow this step. We've identified that the force is equal to k delta x, and we substitute that into our second equation. So that now reads, the strain potential energy equals a half k delta x times delta x. And that can be further simplified as the strain potential energy is a half k delta x squared. That's our third and final equation. So there we have our three derived equations. 
First of all, the restoring force of a spring is equal to K delta X, that's the magnitude, and I've removed the negative sign. The strain potential energy of a spring that's either being compressed or extended can be calculated by half multiplied the force multiplied by the extension delta X. And the second variation is the strain potential energy stored in a spring by either compressing or extending will be equal to half K delta X squared. Thank you for watching this video. I hope it's explained and outlined the derivation of three very important spring equations based upon a force extension graph. As always, thanks for watching. You've been watching a Juddy Productions video. If you've enjoyed and indeed learned something from this video, then please remember to like, share, comment, and subscribe. And as always, thanks for watching.